Happy Finish Friday, everybody. I don't know about you, but I have really enjoyed this whole series of teaching you different finishes on Toscana Milk Paint. Today is one of the most exciting. A lot of people, when they talk about wax, it seems really simple, but it can transform your whole finishing process. So, I wanna do the first thing first and want to announce our winner for our giveaway this week. If you haven't registered for the giveaway, make sure to go to the link on our Facebook or Instagram page and enter that, and then you will receive an email uh, that will give you information along with a coupon code on your email. So because this person registered for the giveaway on that link, um, the winner is Christy Fairfield. Congratulations, Christy. We will be sending out your um, free prize um, on Wednesday of next week. So they'll be looking for that. Of course, we'll be closed Monday and Tuesday for, um, for the new year. So happy new year in advance, everybody. All right, so um, really quickly, today I wanna go over the importance of waxing, what it does, how it can transform your finishes. Um, so let's take a glance really quickly. Let's look at some of these finishes over here and just to notice how waxing can change them. Look really closely on, even with this one, now this is a stain, it's not, it's not uh, a milk paint finish, but this is the before and this is the after using our ceruzing wax. This one is done, it's just a little bit larger surface. This particular finish, guys, is not paint, it's actually done with wax. So I'm gonna show you how to be able to do that in just a minute. This surface is also done with wax. That blue color is done with wax. A lot of people don't realize how you can get these incredibly authentic looking finishes done with wax. One thing that's very important is the fact that you need to remember that when you're working with Toscana Milk Paint by Amy Howard at Home, you're going to have to seal it. Milk paint can be reactivated with water or moisture, so we need to make sure that we seal it very well. Our waxes are a petroleum-based wax, so it will do a great job of sealing your finish. Now, of course, the waxes come in a lot of different types of uh, waxes, whether our metallic waxes, our ceruzine, liming waxes. We're gonna be focused more today on these liquid waxes that come in squeezable containers. A lot of people will ask me, what are the best tools to use with the waxes? These are the best tools. When you, when you are working with waxes, you wanna use a chip brush. The, these chip brushes are a double thickness. Um, it allows you to be able to apply them, uh, the waxes to where it's about double of what an average chip brush would be. And it's got a natural finish on the, uh, the chip brush, so it's gonna go on. You don't wanna use a synthetic brush for applying waxes. That is not desirable. All right, the other thing is, these great um, hog hair brushes are a round surface. They're great for applying a lot of wax. Um, it will allow you to be able to put it on a surface like a chest of drawers and about a half of the time is trying to put it on with a small brush. I usually use these type brushes for very small surfaces or adding my dark wax. So today we're gonna be going over how to custom make waxes. You can make waxes any color you want. Because of the formulization of our milk paints, as well as our one-step paint, you can mix them with waxes. This is not the same with other companies. So you can't try this with other companies, it's not gonna work the same. But because I formulated these products, I didn't go to a company and just say, put your name on them, or put my name on them, I formulated them. So I wanna show you on this particular piece that we've painted in black, how you can totally change it by using some red wax. Now, you can make it look very understated. So let me show you how easy this is. So I'm just gonna take some of my red one-step paint, and I'm gonna take just a little bit of our light antique wax. I'm gonna squirt just a little bit out right here. And I don't need very much at all, so I'm just gonna take a spoon here and just a little dab adding this here. That way it allows you to see about how much you need. You don't need a whole lot. You're always going to have more like two parts wax to one part paint. 
Now I'm gonna come back and watch this. Mind blown. I hope you're getting excited because this can transform the way you do furniture. Look at this, guys. Now I've got red wax. Isn't that exciting? Now, the whole process of the way we've done it in the past, when you load up your brush and you're doing waxes, you wanna make sure that you offload. I don't want you to have too much on here. Now, remember again, if you're just tuning in, we are making custom waxes today. We're showing you how you can use the one-step paint and you can also use our Discana Milk Paint to make custom waxes. So make sure that you offload. You don't wanna have too much on there. And then I'm coming back onto this piece that I have painted in black. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see just a little bit better. And then I'm gonna come back. Now, I'm doing it really light. You can do a couple of different things. You can come back and you can put it on a little heavier. This is going to just be a beautiful colorant. I like to come back, let it dry a little bit. It's not gonna look this garish, don't worry. Because it's about having a very subtle coloring. I'm gonna do this one first because I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna add some dust of ages and I want you to see how incredibly different it's gonna be. Now remember, we're live. Um, it's about 12 noon, so if you want to ask questions, if you're on Instagram, send me some love, guys. Even on Facebook, send me some love and some hearts. Let me know that you like this. Let me know that you're learning, but I also want to ask, answer questions for you. Now, I'm going to come back. One thing I want to make sure to point out to you. When you are cleaning your brushes, you can clean them with clean slate. Remember, the waxes are a petroleum-based product, so you cannot clean them with water. Unlike our paints, um, the milk paints and the one-step paint is water-based. You can clean with water, but when you come to start cleaning your brushes, you need to use the clean slate uh, to clean your furniture as well as cleaning your brushes. All right, so I'm going to come back with another brush. You'll notice this is a clean brush. When you've loaded up your wax, you've, this is what we call a positive tool, and when you're taking it off, this is more of a negative tool. So watch this, let me move this so you can come down on it. I'm just gonna come back and I'm gonna pull away. See how it's now becoming a positive tool? I'm gonna pull away and I'm bringing that black, that first coat out and I'm leaving some of that red wax down in the crevices. Love that. I wanna have a little bit of highlighting in there, but I want to pull that black back out. Now, I'm going to set this aside because I, I want this to come to tack just a little bit more. And then I'm going to show you how to be able to add some dust of ages. Now, I want to show you something else. Here's a totally different piece. This is white. So you can start with a white surface, whether it's like a Bauhaus buff or a ballet white, in the one step, as well as Toscana. So you can use this surface. This is over a Toscana. You can use uh, colored waxes on top of Toscana milk paint as well as your one-step paint. But I'm showing you this today because I've got to make sure that you're not going to forget to seal your beautiful milk paint finishes. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of my squeezable wax in here. And I'm going to take just a little bit of my um, Amalfi Coast milk paint. Doesn't take very much at all. I'm going to add that into my wax. Isn't this fun? It's kind of like cooking. So we're live right now. If it's 12 noon and you're watching this, so I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. All right. So mix that up. I'm going to come back with my brush. I'm going to blend this just a little bit more. Look at that pretty blue wax. Now, it's always going to dry much lighter. There's a question okay. from R. Fox. What is the difference between ceruzing wax and liming wax? So, the ceruzing wax and the liming wax will get a lot of the same finish. This is a squeezable form with the ceruzing wax, so it's a lot easier to work with. Um, the liming wax comes in a puck. So you can add a little bit of the clean slate with the liming wax to be able to put on your brush and use it. 
but um, but they're, they'll give you kind of the same look, but the um, as far as historically, liming and ceruzine are totally different. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Part of the reason, too, that this is white is the fact that it does have calcium carbonate and it has chalk in it. All right, so I want to put a little bit of this on here, and then I'm going to show you how to make wax with our Dust of Ages. All right, so make sure you offload it so there's quite a bit on there. And you remember at last week when I showed you how you can mix the milk paint to make different colors. So I can take Amalfi Coast and add just a little bit of the Noir. I can mix all different kinds of color and customize. So I could literally make hundreds of colors of waxes. So I'm gonna put this on. Look how it's changing the color. You know, when you use the waxes too, you can come back and pull it, pull it through so you've got that underneath color. Right now it looks a little garish, but we're gonna make it a lot lighter. Waxes mixed with pigments like your Toscana Milk Paint and your, um, and your One Step are gonna dry beautiful and flat. Now here's my positive tool. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna um, clean it up just a little bit and lighten it with a totally clean, dry brush. Look at that. Can you see how now it starts to look a little bit more striated? See how I'm going one direction like this? Can you see those lines where they're just kind of, um, it's streaky, it's called strie, S-T-R-I-A. And this is actually a technique that was used on furniture many, many years ago. So this allows you to kind of see what it looks like at first, but now as you start to work with it, it should be much softer and much lighter like this side. Isn't that pretty? And it's so easy. So you could literally paint all your pieces like Bauhaus Buff or Ballet White and then come back and do colored waxes on them like this and they look beautiful. Let me grab another one. And because this is milk paint that you've added into your, your wax, it's going to dry down to this dead flat gorgeous color. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, as that starts to dry, I can come back if I want to with a rag and look at that. I'm going to pull, before it completely dries, I'm going to pull a little bit of that undercoat of that white back through. Can you see that? Does that show up on the camera? Not a lot. I don't want you to take it all off, but look how, as a piece of furniture would wear, it would wear on just the tops. It's not going to wear down in the crevices. So just come and just hit the tops. So that way it's kind of got a different halo effect. So you've got a lot of texture and a lot of depth going on. So I want to make sure with these waxes that they will dry about 30 minutes, an hour, whenever, and then come back and buff them just on the top so that way it looks like it's been worn down. Now guys, this was done just with mixing a colored wax. Look at the difference. It's very authentic looking, it's very soft and very natural. So is this the sealer or do you need to put on a final sealer? No, this is your sealer. That's, who has that question? Pretty again. Pretty again, that's a great, that is a great question. No, this is it, you're done. Once that dries down, um, it's hardy. It, the way we have formulated these waxes, that allows you to be able to put your color in here and it's as hardy as it can be. You can use it and enjoy it for years to come. Guys, we're gonna be able to make this ourselves. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. All right, so I'm gonna take just a little bit of my Dust of Ages, and put that in there. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of my clear wax again. Hold on to me. Oh goodness, it looks like a, that's, that's funny. It's like a, I'm making a potion. All right, let's mix them together. I love teaching y'all. I love the fact that you are just such loyal, sweet customers. And I love the fact that this is an opportunity for me to connect with you and, um, and teach you these products and why I developed them and what they can do. All right, I'll tell you what, instead of working on the white, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come and work on a gray color. So, Look at that, this is called more of a zinc color. It's a really dark, dark gray. It's really pretty. Make sure you offload again. Anytime you load that wax up, 
Make sure that it's blended really well. And you'll notice I'm only mixing a little bit. Only mix what you need to be able to do a project. Make sure you offload so that well, you've got complete control over it. And then come back. Again, if you're just tuning in, I just did this with my Dust of Ages. I mixed the Dust of Ages with some, um, some of my light antique wax. Is this so fun? Does it get any easier than this, guys? So fun. It kind of looks distressed a little bit. It's got some detail to it. But look how I'm just tipping the edge of it to allow that detail to show up. Look how I'm turning my wrist all of the time and then building it up so where it's not too much. Can you save what you mix if it has an airtight lid if you make too much? Yes, no, who asked that question? R Fox. R Fox, you can save it in an airtight container and it's good for a long time, yes. If it gets a little hard, maybe um, maybe you didn't press the top down well enough, you can just come back with a little bit, of, a drop or two of this Clean Slate. Um, this is a great DIY pantry product to have. It cleans your furniture, it cleans your brushes. Um, you can use it in waxes like this to be able to, um, to thin them out and use them over again. So it doesn't look like doesn't look like this red wax that I made earlier is quite come to tack. It'll usually take about 20 to 30 minutes, but I did want to show you how now I can also take this dust of ages, put it down in the crevices like this. So before you, you put the wax on the wood, it had a sheen on it. What kind of paint was on this white and the blue? The, um, it didn't have a sheen to it, it was just the one step paint. Yeah. Okay, now guys, look at this. Look at this. I wanna clear this stuff out of the way. I want you to be able to see. Look at that sheen, look at that. Now, my red hasn't dried enough, but can you see? Can you see the red, see how subtle it is? When maybe you look at that and you think, oh goodness, that's garish looking, it's not. This is when this is when we're in the league of fine furniture finishing. Look at that. I want to come. It's so subtle. It allows you to be able to layer with colors. It's nuts how I've been doing this for so long, and I still get excited to be able to see the transformation. Can you see the red in there now? That's just done with waxes. So now all of a sudden, whether this is gonna be a kitchen island, this could be a kitchen cabinet finish. This could, this could be a piece of uh, finish that you wanna do on a piece of furniture that you have. It's about being subtle. It's about layering. It's about texturing. And seeing that very subtle red in there just goes back to how we mixed it up with the one-step paint and layered that on there. It's just really um, very exciting. So hopefully, so what we went over today, I was showing you how you can mix and make blue waxes, any color wax you want, but mixing the, um, the milk paint with our squeezable uh, beeswax. We came back and we mixed our uh, Dust of Ages with our beeswax and we made a beautiful dark gray zinc wax, as well as showing you how to do color waxes and uh, building them with our dust of ages yes so we have a couple of questions on instagram okay what was the base color on the molding the gray base color i think that was milk paint from last week it was it was the gray Standing milk paint that we painted from last week okay and then suzanne jameson asks my piece of furniture does not have any raised details with this technique look just as pretty on that type of furniture. Yes, let's look at a, let's look at a flat surface over here. Um, it, and a lot of that can come back. See, these are all flat. These now, there's some oak on here, you know, but it's still a flat surface. But yes, it will look more striated. So yes, it won't be as dramatic as far as um, maybe with the dust of ages going down in the crevices, but you can do a beautiful striated finish um, with your waxes and it's beautiful. Yes. So did you seal the gray piece before you added Dust of Ages? You had wax in it. No, I didn't add um, Dust of Ages. I just added, I took Dust of Ages 
and mixed it with my and made a wax remember and then all I did was I dry brushed the wax that I created with the dust of ages on top of that finish I love this that means you are excited you're learning something and that's the whole reason why I do this so next year which is next Friday we're gonna start a brand new series on painting furniture and all the basics I'm gonna take you through eight weeks guess what we're gonna start out noon Friday you're going shopping with me I'm gonna go through one of my favorite antique malls here in Memphis Tennessee and I'm gonna show you why I would buy certain items how you can work with different finishes how you can use the one-step paint on them and then that way we're gonna go from there on how to clean how to paint what tools to use the whole nine yards for eight weeks so make sure you tune in tell your friends that I'm going to be teaching you all the basics starting from zero so you can be successful and enjoy the bragging rights have a great new year guys